Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last couple of lectures, we have looked at the postulates of quantum mechanics. Let us now look at a simple quantum model system which can help us make those ideas a little more concrete. This model system is called the particle in a 1D box system or the particle in an infinite square well. Besides being a very simple model for us to understand the postulates, we will see that this model is actually applicable in certain cases to explain electronic spectroscopy. So, we will come back to this later in the class when we are going to discuss electronic spectroscopy. Let us now look at this model. In this model, we consider that the particle can move in only one spatial dimension let us say the x direction. Further, the particle is confined to a certain region of this x axis. So, you can imagine that there are hard walls like this and as long as the particle is within x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a, the potential energy of the particle is equal to 0. However, if it goes less than x is equal to 0, then the potential energy becomes infinity and similarly if it goes to x greater than a then the potential energy becomes infinity. We can write the potential energy in the following form v of x is equal to 0 when x is between 0 and a and it is equal to infinity when x is less than 0 or x is greater than or equal to a. So, we see that the particle is confined in this region and the question is what is the nature of the wave functions of the system and how does the system or the wave function of the system evolve in time. You can imagine the system to be a particle moving along a rod like this. So, as long as the particle is confined into this region, its potential energy is 0, but it cannot go out of this. So, the potential energy is infinite in regions outside this uh, region that it can be in. So, let us examine how the solutions of this problem looks like. Here is the diagram of the potential energy which is V is equal to 0 in this region, V is equal to infinity in these two regions. Now, if the potential energy is infinity, the particle cannot be there and the wave function in those regions. So, in this region it is 0 and also in this region it is 0. This would imply that because of continuity even for the wave function in the region inside the box, this part here point, this point here should have the value 0 and also this point here should have the value 0. This will ensure that the wave function is continuous at these boundaries. So, we can write these two boundary conditions as psi of 0 is equal to 0 and psi of a is equal to 0. Now, let us write the Hamiltonian of the system. So, the Hamiltonian which is denoted as h hat is equal to the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator. Now, in the region 0 to a, the potential energy is 0. And let us write the Hamiltonian in this region. So, the Hamiltonian is simply the kinetic energy operator which is minus h bar squared by 2 m d squared by d x squared in the region 0 x less than a. Let us now look at solving the Schrodinger equation with this. 
the Schrodinger equation as you know is I h bar del psi by del t is equal to h of psi and because in this case the Hamiltonian does not depend on time. We have seen that solving the Schrodinger equation here becomes equivalent to solving the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian h psi is equal to e psi. So, we are going to solve the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian in this case. We have written here the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian of the particle in a box. So, let us see how the solutions of this equation look like. So, let us rearrange this a little bit. So, d square psi x by d x squared is equal to 2 m e minus 2 m e by h bar squared psi of x. So, we notice here that this is a second order differential equation and psi of x is some function which when you differentiate twice you get the same function back with a constant. Okay. We know that the solution of an equation like this is a sine function or a cosine function. A most general solution is something like this psi is equal to a times sine of k x plus b times cosine of k x. k here would be square root of 2 m e by h bar squared or square root of 2 m e by h bar. Now, if you substitute this into the eigenvalue equation here, you can verify that this is indeed a solution. Now, there are certain conditions on the psi that we have specified before, which is that psi at x is equal to 0 and psi at x is equal to a is equal to 0. So, let us apply the condition psi of 0 is equal to 0. This gives psi of 0 is equal to a sin of 0 plus b cosine of 0 is equal to 0. Now, sin of 0 is equal to 0 we know that and cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So, this implies that b is equal to 0. Now, the solution has the form psi is equal to a sin k x. Let us apply the second boundary condition which is psi of a is equal to 0. This implies that a sin k of a is equal to 0. Now, sin of this part will be 0 when k of a is some integral multiple of pi. So, it could be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi and so on. n is equal to integers. k is equal to n pi over a. If we substitute this value of k into the expression for the wave function, then we get the valid wave function to be psi is equal to a sin n pi x over a and if we substitute this k into the expression for the energy which we have here, then we get n pi by a which is k is equal to square root of 2 m e by h bar and e therefore becomes n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by a square 2 m or if you use that h bar is equal to h over 2 pi, then we get energy is equal to n squared h squared by 8 m a squared. So, this is the energy of the particle in a box and the corresponding eigenfunctions are these where n are integers. So, we see that the energy of the particle is now quantized. Not all values are allowed, but only values corresponding to this expression when n are integers. 
and similarly the corresponding eigenfunctions are given here which depend on what n is and n is usually called a quantum number. Now what integer values can n take? It could be 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now the question is, is 0 allowed? If you substitute 0 into this expression, you will see that the wave function becomes simply psi is equal to 0. So that is not allowed. What about negative integers? If you take n is equal to minus 1 for example, then you get psi is equal to a sin minus 1 pi x over a and we see that, that that is nothing but minus of a times sin pi x over a. So, it is essentially the eigenfunction corresponding to n is equal to 1 multiplied by minus 1 and so it does not really give us a new solution. Let us now examine the form of the eigenfunctions of the particle in a box and the corresponding energies. So, here is the particle in a box and the lowest energy corresponds to n is equal to 1 which is E is equal to E1 is equal to 8 squared over 8 m A squared and if we put the energy level here note that we are not putting it at energy this is the energy axis and we are not putting the energy equal to 0 because even for the lowest quantum number n is equal to 1 the energy has a finite value here. Now the wave function corresponding to this is psi is equal to a sin pi x over a. So how does this function look? If we take a point x is equal to 0, then the sin value is 0 here. If you take x is equal to a, then you get sin pi, which is the value here, sin pi is equal to also 0. And if you take x is equal to a by 2, in that case, you get sin pi by 2, which is equal to 1. And if you do the other points, then you can see that the wave function looks like this. For n is equal to 2, which we can draw here, the energy is 4 8 squared by 8 m a squared and the wave function is psi is equal to a sin 2 pi x over a, which when we plot looks like this. And for n is equal to 3, now the energy gap here between n is equal to 2 and 3, this gap is more than the gap here, because here now the energy E3 is equal to 9 8 squared by 8 m a squared. And if you draw the wave function there, this eigenfunction is a sin 3 pi x over a which looks something like this. Let us now examine the properties of this eigenfunctions. So, we have the eigenfunction to be psi of x is equal to a sin n pi x over a. The question is what is a? You will recall that one of the properties that a wave function needs to have is that psi star psi of the wave function integrated over all space needs to be 1, which is the normalization condition or the condition that the sum of probabilities of finding the particle at any position is equal to 1. So, let us apply this condition for our wave function. So, minus infinity to infinity a star a sin squared n pi x over a is equal to 1 or we can write this as mod of a squared and the limits go from 0 to a because in this case the particles probability to be outside the box is 0. So, the only place where the wave function has a non-zero value is between 0 and a 
and so this becomes sin squared n pi x over a dx is equal to 1. We now make a substitution to solve this integral. So, let us substitute z is equal to n pi x over a. Therefore, dz is equal to n pi dx over a and this integral now becomes a square 0 to when we substitute a here this becomes n pi and this becomes sin squared z dz the whole thing multiplied by a over n pi. this integral should be equal to 1. This integral can be solved by using trigonometric identities where we convert the sin squared z to cosine 2 z and then integrate or you can think of this geometrically in the following way. So, consider this to be the z axis and in that the sin squared function looks something like this between 0 to pi here and pi to 2 pi here and the cosine square function is the complementary function which looks like this. Now, you notice that in a cycle which is from 0 to pi or between pi to 2 pi, the area under the sine square curve which is shown here is equal to the area under the cosine squared curve which I am showing now with a different type of marking. So, the integral sin squared z dz is equal to integral cosine squared z dz in an interval 0 to pi or any other cycle from pi to another pi plus 1. Furthermore, we know that sin squared z plus cosine squared z is always equal to 1. So, this function sin squared z plus cosine squared z on an average has a value 1. So, on an average both these functions sin squared z and cosine squared z have a value half and within the interval 0 to pi their integral will become half times pi or pi by 2. This means the integral from 0 to n pi of sin squared z dz is equal to n pi by 2. If we substitute the value of this integral back here then we get a over n pi a square n pi by 2 is equal to 1. If we cancel the n pi here, then you see that capital A squared is equal to 2 over A and then one of the allowed values for a is square root 2 over a. If we plug this back into the expression of the wave function, the normalized wave function becomes psi of x is equal to square root 2 over a sin n pi x over a, which is the final expression for the normalized eigenfunction of the particle in a box. Let us now use this wave function to calculate some average properties. You will recall that the average property of some operator is given by the integral psi operator a psi. This is written in Dirac notation and the integral would be psi star operator a on psi d tau over all space. 
So, let us do this for the position operator in our particular case. So, the average position is integral minus infinity to infinity, but this can be written as only 0 to a because that is the only region where the wave function exists. In all other regions, it is 0 and therefore will not contribute to this integral. And the wave function is square root 2 over a, which I can write outside as 2 over a sin n pi x over a and here is the operator which is x multiplied by the wave function again n pi x over a dx and this is 2 over a 0 to a x sin squared n pi x over a dx. Now, we can solve this integral by parts and I will not do this in the interest of time, but if you work it out, you will see that the value of this integral is a squared by 4 and then if you substitute into the expression, you get 2 over a multiplied by a squared by 4 and that is equal to a over 2. So, the average position of the particle is a over 2, which is the center of the box. This makes sense because the particle can be anywhere and on an average just by thinking about it in a symmetric manner, the particle should be on an average right in the middle of the box. Let us now consider the average momentum of the particle. So, average of p that is equal to 2 over a 0 to a sin n pi x over a and the momentum operator is minus i h bar d by dx sin n pi x over a dx. This is equal to 2 over a 0 to a sin n pi x over a minus i h bar and the differential of sin is cosine n pi x over a multiplied by n pi by a dx which is 2 over a multiplied by minus i h bar n pi by a and then 0 to a sin n pi x over a cosine n pi x over a dx. And if you solve this integral here, you will find that the value of this is equal to 0. So, the average momentum of the particle in a box is equal to 0. Now, this again makes sense because the particle could be moving to the left or to the right and on an average the momentum of the particle will be just 0 because momentum has a direction. So, the momentum values on the right will cancel those on the left and on an average the momentum will be 0. Let us now look at the time dependence of the eigenfunctions of this system. So, we have seen that a general eigenfunction is given by psi n of x is equal to square root of 2 over a sin n pi x over a. The time dependent function corresponding to this can be written as phi n x comma t is equal to psi n x multiplied by e to the power of minus i e n t over h bar. So, if we write this out completely, this will be square root 2 over a sin n pi x over a and this time part can be written as the real part cosine of e n t by h bar plus i sin e n t by h bar. 
So, let us look at how the probability density of this wave function evolves in time and we will also look at how the probability density of a wave function which is a linear combination of two eigenfunctions evolves in time. You see here the wave function corresponding to the lowest eigenfunction of the particle in a box and in particular you see the time evolution of this wave function. The real part of this wave function is shown in blue and the imaginary part is shown in red. As you can see the real and imaginary parts complement each other because one is the cosine function and the other is the sine function. So, as cosine increases the sine decreases and that is what you see here. You can now see the second eigenfunction of the particle in a box and its time evolution. Interestingly, the probability density corresponding to both these wave functions which is shown in the bottom here does not depend on time. Now, consider the situation where the wave function is a linear combination of the two eigenfunctions. In particular, it is an equal linear combination of the two eigenfunctions with 50 percent phi 1 and 50 percent phi 2. Now, you see that the probability density does depend on time and this is consistent with what we have written down before about the time evolution that if a wave function is a linear combination of eigenfunctions, it is not a stationary state. In that case, the probability density does depend on time. The particle in a box system besides being a simple model to understand quantum mechanics will also serve us as a model to explain electronic spectroscopy for certain classes of molecules. These are conjugated molecules like this which have double bonds. So, double butadiene like this or a conjugated molecule like this. When there is linear conjugation like this, the pi electrons of the system which are the outermost electrons feel a potential energy which can be approximately drawn to be of this form. This is the energy axis here and this is the length of the molecule. So, this potential energy will be more like this in the case of a longer molecule and will have a even longer length in the case of the triply conjugated molecule. The potential energy of this shape implies that the electron is confined to this region and cannot leave, but of course, the walls of this potential energy are not infinite like in the particle in a box because from the molecule the electron can actually leave. However, we will see that the particle in a box is a fairly good approximation to a potential like this and we will see that based on its eigenvalues we can explain or model the electronic absorption frequency. We will examine this further when we come to the section on electronic absorption spectroscopy.